Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about the first four problems from the latest code forces round 827. So the first problem are not too much difficult, so I will compile them in one. First problem is sum. You're given three integers A, B, C, determine that whether one is the sum of other two numbers. Can you find out that whether one number is equal to the sum of other two numbers? So it's very simple. Obviously, if the other two numbers are smaller, then only if you can add them and it will equal to the larger number. So you just have to find out the larger number and the other two smaller. So because it is only three numbers, you can just make an array out of it like three numbers and sort them out so that you have the numbers in sorting form. And now if the first two number adds to get the third number, the answer is yes, because that's the only case that is possible to get it to. And if it is not, an answer is false. So I don't need to like to show the code. It's very simple. Okay. But the thing is that you just have to sort out the numbers. Uh, you just put it inside an array, sort it out. And the first two numbers sum should be equal to third number. If it is, the answer is yes. That's the answer. Second problem is increasing. So you just have to like, you can go through a problem statement in very simple terms. You just have to check that whether can you rearrange the numbers inside an array, which is given to you as an array of n numbers, such that the array's number should be in an increasing order. So as you can see, like a1, the smallest and a2, and like it should be strictly increasing as you can see. So it is also very simple. You just have to sort out the complete array and you just have to check that after sorting where the complete array becomes strictly increasing. So you just have to check the next number with the previous number that whether they should be strictly increasing. Okay. So the next number should be greater than the previous number. If it is equal or smaller, the answer is false. Else if it is strictly increasing, the answer is correct. So two problems are very simple. Let's move on to the third problem. The third problem is also not too much difficult. You just have to understand the overall uh, case. The problem goes that you that you have an eight cross eight grid, which you can see. Now some rows are painted red, like and some vertical columns are painted blue. So like vertical columns are only painted blue and the like horizontal rows are painted red. Okay. Now we are odd, like they have done this operation in some order. What I order is let's say you have you can see that we have first taken a complete empty board, then this particular column is painted blue. Then when you're painting a row that is red, obviously some block might intersect then they might also be done in the red only because what is the new operation that you are doing? So what is the current operation? Whatever new block, you can just assume that you are painting a wall. Okay. If it is the, the previous color wall is that's a blue color. If you just now paint over it, it will become red color. So obviously some, some will overlap and a new color will come, not the blue color. Okay. Thing is now you have to determine that what is the last paint that you have used inside the whole, uh, like whole process when you are given the final state of the wall. So given that how the wall will look after this operation, you just have to tell that what is the final state, like what is the final color you have used. Now it's very simple. What you can see is that, see, because you are doing a complete, complete section uh, wise drawing. So let's uh, like coloring. So you can, let's say if I am drawing a blue, uh, let's say column, then it is completely filled from top to bottom. Now, if any row I fill, it will eventually intersect with any of the blue ones. Okay. Now in that scenario, obviously blue will be cut at some point. Okay, it, there will be some red. So if there is a complete row of red at any point, obviously the red will be done in the last point. And if you can find out any complete column of blue, okay, then blue is done at the last point. But very simple, you just have to find out that whether there is any row that is complete red. Because if it is complete red, obviously it will be done in the last step only. Because if it is not done in the last step, any blue line might have overset, like intersected it and make it like color change. So if it is a complete red, the like strike of a row, then the answer is that it is red that is in the last step. And if it is like n in that case, you can see that the answer always exists. So, so if it is not a red, then the answer is obviously. What you can see is that you can take the rows because it's also a fixed size. It's an eight by eight grid. So the rows length is eight. You can take every row as an like as an input, like but and then if any row has eight consecutive reds, like eight consecutive R's, the answer is that it is red, and else it is. You can just check out, take the input of every like row by one by one for eight rows and just check that it is a consecutive of R. If it is red, then answer is red. Going down to the fourth problem, it is co prime. So, uh, the problem statement states that you are given an array of n positive integers and the array numbers, the value of these numbers inside the array goes from one till 1000. Okay, that's the one thing. Whenever I see small constraints, huh, try to look why they have given small constraints. Can we use this at our benefit? So you have to find out the maximum value of i plus j, like i plus j is the indexing. You have to like maximize the sum of the indexes such that the value of those indexes like a i and a j are co-prime. Okay. Uh, maximize such that like both of them are co-prime. What is the co-prime? Co-prime I just say that numbers are co-prime if they have only one as a common divisor. Okay, let's say five or seven. 
when you like you find out let's say hcf of two numbers like highest common divisor then for those numbers it should be one only okay then those two numbers are called co prime okay now uh, you just given some numbers you just have to check that what like whether for those what is the maximum value of i plus j such that both the numbers you have chosen are co prime now because it is 1000 i can do this in o of n square by doing somewhat doing an operation of on let's say of i like the value of it now what if, what i can like what i actually want is i want indexes like if i like somewhat move my question down to a of i i have to somewhat store the indexes now i just want the maximum index because i want to maximize a plus like i plus j so in simple terms what i want to do is let's say i have numbers from 1 till 1000 you, you can just make a map out of it let's say make an array of 1000 numbers 1 to 1000 what you can do is you can just iterate over all these numbers one by one so let's say i just store this number let's say just take this again example uh, let's say 1, 3, 5, 2, 1, 3, 5, 2, and then uh, 4, 7. Let's say you just make an array of 1000 numbers. Okay, 1, 2, till let's say 1000. Now what happens is, these are some indexes. Let's say these are the numbers. You have the indexes over these numbers. Also, like this is a 0 index. This is 1 index, 2 index, index, index 5 index. Now, what our main problem is that I just want to ensure that if I take any number, let's say I want to choose two co-prime numbers. First, I want to choose the two, two co-prime numbers. Two co-prime numbers, numbers is that if they take a G suite of them, they should be like equal, like they should be equal to one. For that, what I can do is I have only 1000 numbers. So what I can do is I can store that. Okay, I've seen one. So what is the position or index at which one is stored? I will just make, mark it inside this array. So let us store index zero. Okay, then this is three is finite index one five and index let's say uh, two and two add index let's say three so i'll update all of these indexes let's say now seven update like occurs at index five so this let's say seven it occurs at index let's say five then i again see it so index i will update at the same position index six i will not show the latest i will show the latest index only because that's the maximum i just iterate over this whole array from left to right and whatever number i see i just it update that index in that in certain array now what i have stored in this array is I have stored the frequency of all these numbers, like because the numbers are one to thousand only. I have stored all of these numbers at which latest index they have found. Now what I can do is I can just do an O of n square, like okay, brute force way over this array and check that whether two numbers exist. So how are we gonna check whether two exist number exist by the indexes? If the index are there, then obviously the means that the number exists. If it is zero, which means that the index does not exist. But I can check out that if the index exists. And which means the number ex exists. I can just check that if that two numbers are like co prime. By co prime, I just find out the GCD, which can be found out very easily in O of n log n. Okay, so which means that I just find out the GCD if uh, O of log n. If they are co prime, then what I can do is I have the latest index because I want to maximize i plus j, so latest index will be maximum. So I will take the latest indexes which from here earlier, like whatever two numbers are there, add them out. I want to maximize it over all the possible prime pairs which I can form from this two. Like in from only on that. So that's the overall logic that we will be using out. Let's move on to the code part. I'll show you more with the code part. So what we have done here is that we have taken n and x. This is the array n. We have made an uh, array, let's say, last of 1001 length because it's of 1 to 1000 because the last one is. And then what I've done is that I've did over all the numbers, taken x, and then updated that particular number value with i plus 1, like x plus 1 because. If I make it zero, then it will be zero only like the, and I want to do uh, like, and also the index in the question also starts from one. So I'll just initialize with I plus one. Okay. So all the indexes, the latest index of the quarter number will be stored in the last array. So what I'll do is I want to store the answer. I want to maximize I plus G value. So I want to iterate over all the particular numbers with their co-prime value. So I'll just iterate over all them. You can also done in, I've done in backward manner. You can also do in forward manner also. So just iterate over all the particular pairs. Okay, and if they are co like if they exist, which means that they're non-zero. So this value exists and this value also exists, and the GCD of both of them is equal to one, then this the answer is the value which is stored here, which is the indexes, last of i and last of j. Just add them, maximize it all the core uh, pairs that you can find out, and that's it. That's the overall logic and the fourth problem as well. If you figure it out, you can mention in the comment box for this problem. I will see you in the next one. Like and bye.